What's going on guys? Coach Matt at YougoProBaseball.com. I'm here with my man Fernando Cortez. We're here in Temecula, California, his right. beautiful facility. Come check it out if you're in the SoCal area. And we're gonna talk about, we got together last year yeah. and some of the stuff we shot didn't have great audio because I was just using my iPhone. But now we got a cameraman here, we got better right. audio. And uh, we wanna talk about some of the stuff we were talking about in this video. I wanna talk about confidence and how having confidence can make you a better baseball player. You were able to play at the highest level of the game, a major league baseball player. And I remember seeing a video of you and I believe it was your first major league play. Mm -hmm. And you were at second base and you fielded the ball and you threw it over to first base and you just pimped it and you just were walking around. And if I was in that situation, yeah. in my first major league game, I would be shaking, I believe. And how, how did you do that? How were you able to make it so far and have that supreme confidence and just have that swagger and, and be so successful? I want to know. And how can younger players use that to their advantage? I think, I think one of the first things that you have to do is you got to believe in yourself, right? So for me, as a young age, I was always one of the smaller guys. So I always had to play with the chip on my shoulder, right? So I was even basketball, football, didn't matter. I was the rug rat running around and I was working hard, busting my tail. Then all of a sudden, you know, I actually grew and I was a bigger guy. So I had that mentality of a small guy, right? But then I actually ended up being big. So for me, that helped me just always hustle. Then I obviously, when I put all that together, it kind of bred some confidence. And then I really, really would believe in myself. Now, believing in yourself and there's days when you don't, you just got to fake it till you make it. So according to that play that you're talking about, I just remember, you know, being at the biggest stage of my life and I was just like, Lou Pinnell is my manager. If I don't make this play, I'm not going to be on this team. So in the inside, yes, I was a little bit nervous. On the outside, I didn't want anybody to know that I was. So what you saw, that swag and everything was really just a front. Um, and then obviously, the more and more I did that, the more and more I believed in myself. And, you know, I carried myself that way pretty much my whole career. So let me ask you this. So how do you control that? Like, I remember being in situations, big situations where it's like, you know, a, a, a big time in the game or a huge game and being in there and being very scared and being very nervous. And this is in professional baseball. You know, I remember it from youth baseball as well. How do you control that? Like when you're in the moment and you're looking on the outside, like you're, you're under control, how do you control the inside? I think it's, um, it's like that fear thing, right? When people have a fear of something, they're either going to run away from it or run at it. So for me, I found out at a young age that I need to run at it and not back off of it. So the more and more I ran at something that I was insecure about or that I had fear of, I was able to attack that, get rid of the nerves, get rid of the anxiety, and then I could actually combat the way I felt. Now, occasionally that would still pop up. And then, I, you know, like I face guys like Randy Johnson, right? I'm left-handed, he's left-handed, he's 6'10", lefty, lefty. On deck, I'm a little bit nervous, right? Because it's Randy Johnson. You look up to the guy and he's throwing hard, devastating slider. And then I'm like, okay, I, I got to get in the box and I got to go attack this guy. I don't care if he's Randy Johnson. We're on the same field. You know, I'm at this level. He's at this level. And you, get, you just got to put everything else behind you and you just got to go attack it, right? So the, I think at a young age, if I was able to understand that and, and basically fight my fears, that's what helped me out. And I was able to control it whenever it popped up. If it popped up, I'd attack it. You know what I mean? I wasn't like, it popped up, let me run away. Right. I think a lot of guys who I've played with who are, you know, very physically gifted, talented athletes, sometimes they just weren't as strong mentally because when that occasion would rise, they would back off of it, right? And you look at the best in the world in any other sport, right? You look at LeBron James, obviously he physically, he's the most gifted athlete, but there's a lot of guys that are too. But when the occasion arises, these guys want it. The basketball guys, they want the ball. You know, the wide receivers, they're like, throw it to me. You know, the, the, the hitters are like, I want to be up in that situation. I want to be the person to win the game or tie the game or send us into extra innings. You know, pitchers, I want the ball in game seven. So those are the guys who start attacking typical insecure situations that people run from. And I think if you can do that at a young age, it's going to carry on to however long you, you know, you play. That's such a great way you put it because you know looking back I think the more you attack that problem or that fear then you're going to build more confidence the more you attack it because you're like hey this wasn't as bad as I thought and then over time it's going to become easier and easier and then it's not going to be a fear anymore and you have that confidence now in a game of baseball 
where it's a game of failure and it's usually coached by negative people. You know, the best hitters in the world are failing seven out of 10 times. What was your strategy when you're struggling at the dish or you're making errors in the field? Like, how do you bounce back from something like that? So just like you said it, um, and I think baseball obviously has trans, you know, transcended my life in a sense of not that I accept failure, but I understand how to deal with failure, right? Like you said, and I was a hitter, if I'm failing 70% of the time, I'm you know, pretty much one of the best in the league, one of the best you know, in, in the world really. And yet, if I were a doctor failing at 70% of the, my surgeries, I'm either killing people, don't have jobs, you know what I mean? So quickly I had to understand and put things into perspective that if I did fail 70% of the time, I was actually doing good and I didn't beat myself up about it. Now, when I was younger, I got drafted when I was 19. I beat myself up that first year because I just came out of college where I was hitting over 400 for two years in a row. Get into real you know, professional baseball, and now you're hitting 280, 290. To me, 440, 290, like I'm failing. But in the perspective of pro ball, 280, 290 was actually really, really good. So I had to mentally shift and, and you know, put on a different lens perspective. And I had to look at everything around me and absorb the fact that, hey, this is what it is. That's completely different than college. And college was completely different than high school. So this is my new playing field. This is where I got to be. If I'm going to fail more now, I better learn how to actually adjust to it. Because if you're failing, like, you know, 70% of the time, and you're dwelling. So I would say, if you're failing and dwelling, we got a problem. Because now that... 70% is going to turn into 80% of the time you're going to be failing because you don't know how to handle it. It's like that old saying, um, you know, turn the page. You know, and people, they, they say turn the page, but what does it really mean? Well, to me, it means if I'm reading a book and I'm in chapter seven, I'm not going back to chapter one and chapter two, or I'm never going to finish this book. You know what I mean? Like, let's just keep going. Let me read it. I already retained everything I've done. And every time I turn that page, I'm getting closer and closer to where I want to be. If I keep stopping and going back, I got a book that I'm reading for three years. So if I keep stopping and going back and dwelling on my home run or my strikeout or my line drive, then it's going to you know, bring to the field and vice versa. You're not playing good defense. You're dwelling on you know, your third area of the game, but you get up in the bottom of the ninth inning, you have a chance to tie the game, but you're dwelling on that. This is where the mental side comes in. Everybody that you play with, no matter what level you're at, whether it's high school, they all got talent. College, they all got talent. Pro ball, they all got talent. But at the end of the day, what separates them? It's going to be the mental. It's going to be how can these guys not dwell on things, turn the page, and how can they make an adjustment? And can they make that adjustment within pitches, at bats, or is it going to be games and weeks? The good ones, they shrink it. They shrink it down, and they're making adjustments within pitches. And that's your elite. That's perfect. That's perfect the way you put that. And it makes me think that, like, you know, if you have that mindset of attacking the fear, attacking the problem head on, you're going to build more confidence over time. But then also have the idea that failure is okay. It's part of it. It's part of the game and it's part of life in yep. general. And if you can understand that and learn from each failure, then take that learning experience and build on it. You're just becoming a better player, a better person, whatever it is. Yeah, that's awesome stuff, man. Obviously you had that that confidence and that swagger on the field. We could see it even though inside, you know, you may have been nervous. We all get nervous. It's normal to be nervous out there on the field. Just start working on channeling. attacking the problem, yeah. using that energy, channeling it and uh, have the confidence, man. Get out there and have some fun. So yeah. thank you so much. That's no problem, awesome man. stuff. Uh, if you want to follow uh, Fernando, it's Fernando Cortez Baseball on Instagram yep. as well as YouTube. Check him out. If you're in the SoCal area, come out here. Check out the facility. Beautiful stuff. Um, thank you so much for watching. Hop down in the comments. Let us know if there's anything that you want to see. We'll make a video about that. And we'll talk to you guys in the next one.